Hello there. Today, we're talking about these chaps. Now, I know, I know they look like Joes, but they are actually the other guys. That's right. They are Lanard the Core. Now, it's pronounced Core and not Corpse, even though it's written Corpse, because it's a French word, and it's the French word for body or body of men, Core. It's also where we do get the English word Corpse, which means a dead body, such as this dude here. Now, what you see before you is a selection of vintage core figures that I picked up from the charity shop over here in the Netherlands. Unfortunately, we do have a couple of wounded soldiers here. Uh, these dudes have lost their thumbs whilst playing with fireworks. Ouch! And this guy, well, he's very sick. As you can see, he has a groinal injury that has uh, blown both his legs off. And um, he's uh, snapped his ring piece. Oh, what we're going to do today is we are going to have a quick look at the Lanard Company. A little, little look at their history. Where these guys came from. What figures were in the range. A detailed look at each one of these figures. I'm going to try and repair this dude, as I said. And then at the end, I'm going to have a look, see if the Lanard company is still operating. Slight spoiler, yes they are. But we'll have a look at what figures are now available in the range and what I think of them. So make sure you stay till the end for that. Right, okay, let's get into this then. <coughs> According to the Lanard Toy Wiki, link in the description, Lanard is a multinational toy company founded in 1978 in Hong Kong, which started by producing preschool toys. And then in, in around 1987, they jumped onto the G.I. Joe bandwagon with the core. Now there was 24 different figures in that range, and they were called the International Security Force, which sounds a little bit familiar. Action for international heroes! Anyone? Anyone? They were similar in quality and construction to the Joes, with O-rings, as you can see from this dude, but they also had the little screw hole on the back, which could be used for attaching backpacks. Lanard packaged all these figures individually or in multi-packs. Like the Joes, they gave each character a bio and a bit of a backstory, and even made a few vehicles for the line, though some of these seem to be quite difficult to find these days. I do rather like the look of these bikes, and they're not very expensive either. So, oh, I, I can see myself buying one or two in the future, even though I don't really have any space for them. Now, they also made this tactical tank, which looks pretty awesome. And I'm guessing that these guys would have been cheaper than the Joes, and they're exactly the same size and they all fit in the same vehicles. So maybe maybe some of those cheaper vehicles ended up in people's Joe collection and uh, a mixed match of, of the two, I guess. But I never had any of these when I was a kid and I don't remember seeing anything like it out in the wild. Maybe they were never available in the UK. Now, what sets Lanard apart from other bigger companies, such as, let's say, Hasbro, is that they are a toy company solely focused on making toys for kids, whereas Hasbro seem to have the confusing strategy of being focused on reissuing toys for adults at inflated prices, or toys that neither adults or children actually want, that are based on Disney shows that no one likes. Oh. Right, okay, let's see if we can fix this dude. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video, get a screwdriver, open him up, and then we'll go from there. See you in a minute. A few moments later. Okay, as you can see, I have managed to open him up. We have three screws. Oh, look, magnetic. We have the three screws out. One of them, the one in his back, was a little bit tight to get out, but it did come out in the end. Um, these are the broken bits of the pin that holds his legs together. 
and this is a new one. Now I have a few of these spare. I had one break on one of my vintage GI Joes. These were really difficult to find. I found one seller on eBay that was selling them uh, and I got I think four or five spare ones just in case. So um, yeah, easy, easy to change, difficult to find. Right, so what I'm going to do is we are going to put this and his legs back together, change his dried out snapped o-ring and hopefully we'll have a uh, a figure back in working condition again So and there we have his legs back together again. I'm not sure if there's a uh, right or wrong way to have this hook. If I have it pointing towards the back, that just seems to be feel like the right way for it to be. Right, O-ring change. Anyway, now, this guy is a cyborg trooper. Now, that's right, he is a cyborg, spelled cyborg, not cyber. Not sure why. And this is either a version 1 or version 1.5. What's the difference, I hear you ask? Well, I have absolutely no idea. But I have seen that one comes with black accessories, whilst the other one comes with red accessories. So maybe that's a differentiating uh, factor. Otherwise, I, I don't know. I don't know what the difference is between a version 1 and a 1.5. Let me know in the comments if you do know the difference. Now, this one that I have came with no accessories. So if it is an accessory thing, then I don't know what version I have. I have looked online and I've seen that there are at least five different versions of the Cyborg Trooper. Oh, doesn't that sound so good to say it? Cyborg Trooper? It makes me sound like I come from Devon. Right, my lover. We my Cyborg Trooper. Anyway, five different versions of the Cyborg Trooper. Now, first versions obviously were 1 and 1.5 not i think they yeah this was about 86 87 they came out in version 2 and i don't have a date for version 3 that came out in 1986 and version 4 from 1999 i could not find any pictures of version 2 so whether if they truly did exist or whether version 1.5 is version 2 again i am afraid i can't help you there but there you go this is my newly brought to life cyber trooper next and now we come to this rather mad max looking dude now this is crowbar this is a version 4 from the early 2000s Again, version 1 was released in around 1986-87. In 1992, they released a version 2. They also released a version 2.5. But I'm not 100% sure what the difference is. One has a blue missile launcher, one has a black missile launcher. Is that the difference? I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you do know. Now, version 3 came out in 1996. And then this one, as I said came out in the early 2000s i did find this red renegade will warrior figure which is basically the same 
character but in a, a weird variation of red and gold and um, he seems to come from a group of figures that went around on roller skates which is groovy isn't it i don't think gi joe ever put any of their figures on roller skates let me know in the comments if i am wrong as mentioned this dude should have a rocket launcher but again because he's been playing with fireworks and he's broken both his thumbs off he can no longer hold it but he should come also with a backpack that has some spare rockets in it which if i can find one i've been looking online and the accessories are not very expensive so i may actually um, get some accessories for this dude and i do actually i really like this guy he looks like he should be a mad max bad guy and i'm a big mad max fan so uh, anything that looks like it belongs in a mad max movie is my kind of thing now he does have a friend called whispering willy oh, who also looks like a mad max character so i might see if i can get one of those to go in the collection although i don't really want to start a massive collection of something else well i do but i don't have the room for it and i don't think my wife would appreciate it now these guys well when i say these guys this guy and his mate whispering and willy oh, look like they should hang out with the dreadnoughts a little bit don't they that may be a problem maybe that's where they got their inspiration oh. now if you agree with me that this is a great figure let me know by hitting the like tab and if you're not already subscribed now would be a great time to do so and join the ranks of my retro army now here we have mr tony tanner this is a version 2 from 1992 the original was also a uh, 86 87 release version 3 came out in 96 and version 4 in 99 although there isn't much of a difference between the last two apart from some extra orange paint on his boots and belt we should have a mortar and an m16 but then he should also have two thumbs so there's no point getting his accessories as he will not be able to hold them now apart from his broken thumbs you see he's also got two bandy legs and i think that that little bar inside oh look in his bum oh, i think that's bent so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna split him open if i can might as well replace his uh o-ring as well whilst i'm in there whilst i'm poking around like and um see if i can get him to stand up straight but i'm not going to film it so poo but what i will do is at the end show if we have repaired him so mr tony tanner everybody yay right next and now ladies and gentlemen mr whipshaw he's the park ranger of the group you can kind of imagine him going after yogi bear this is a mid 90s version 3 of the figure and i think he looks pretty good i believe he should have an m16 but i'm not 100 percent sure on that as i can't find a clear picture online showing exactly what accessories this figure came with version 1 from 86 87 looks kind of cool the 92 version which is a version 2 looks like he's some kind of work crew mixed with chippendale I'm not sure why he's wearing hazard tape on his chest maybe because he's got dangerous nipples oh, as i said i have the version three and then there's the late 90s version four which is pretty much the same just with again like we saw with mr tony tanner he has some orange detailing on his boots and his belt and his hat now i'm not sure if that was a thing in the late 90s i don't remember putting extra orange on me when i was uh around back then but um there you go obviously these guys had a uh a squad of rather orange guys hey maybe they were they were dutch which goes with my new homeland anyway i think this guy is possibly my favorite of the group i think he is really really cool and he'd play well with the joes wouldn't he let me know what you think in the comments right okay that's enough of you 
And finally, we have this dude, and this dude is Steve Wyoming. Steve! Now, I find, I have absolutely no idea what's going on with this guy. I'm not sure what's going on with his helmet, why he has a number 34 on said helmet, why he doesn't have any clothes on, how this thing is supposed to be staying on his back with no visible straps, why he's called Steve Wyoming. Steve! And doesn't have like a cool name. Some of these guys have cool names and some of them just have normal names. So this guy is Steve. This guy is Tony. This guy is Whipshaw. Cool name. Steve. Whipshaw. Steve. Anyway, this guy does. Uh, other than that, he's in pretty good condition, apart from one loosey goosey river dancey leg. <laughs> and um, yeah. Let me know in the comments what you think about this guy. Why you think he was called Steve? Oh, there you go. That's proper river dance. Do, 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 do. That's not river dance music, is it? Do, 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 do. I, I've never seen the river dance. I shouldn't really comment. Now, this is a version one of the figure, and he should come with what looks like a red rocket pack and a sort of ray gun thing. If you know what they are, let me know in the comments. I've looked to see if I can find any other versions of Steve, but um, sadly, I couldn't find any. So I guess there was only ever this one version of Mr. Wyoming. Steve. Right then, as you can see, I now have five good figures on the tourney table thing. Cyber Trooper, as we know, has been repaired. Tony Tanner, I have just replaced his bent groin or pin I also gave him a new o-ring um, although his old one hadn't quite snapped yet it is deteriorating and was on its way and whilst he was open thought we might as well do it so there you go five Lanard the core figures now quality wise they are pretty much similar with the GI Joes Maybe the plastic is slightly of less good quality as the Joes, but the Joes also suffer from broken thumbs and broken groins. is quite a common thing with the Joes, where and none of these figures have that particular injury. Now, they are miles better than what Galoob put out. If you think about the Galoob three and three quarter inch 18 figures, they were probably the most famous figures that Glue put out. They also put out Gen Patch, which was a, a knockoff of G.I. Joe. And there's a whole range of knockoff G.I. Joes that came about because of Gen Patch. I do have a video about that. You should check that out after this one. Now, Lanard, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, are actually still operating as a toy company. And they're putting out toys like these. In fact, my eight-year-old nephew has a ton of these figures, plus play sets and tanks and jeeps and this awesome plane, which totally blew me away when I saw it. My nephew even let me play with it. And considering the size of it, it's actually designed with a handle so that kids can pick it up and fly it around. It's lightweight and it's made of a plastic that isn't going to shatter if you drop the whole thing. It's very, very cool. Now, that being said, I actually think that Lanard is one of the most important toy companies still in business today. Why, I hear you ask? Well, I'll tell you. It's because Lanard make affordable toys for kids that can be played with. That's right, affordable for kids. Kids can actually go out with their pocket money and buy these because they are so cheap. And then they can smash them around and bash them around whilst playing and they don't break. I know that Lego and Playmobil, also high quality toys for kids, but very expensive for what they are. You know, 
Lannard are making toys like we had in the 80s so that kids can use the, their imagination on a budget like we did in the 80s. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe this video. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. It's the one where I talk about Galoob's version of G.I. Joe, Gem Patch. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Steve!